Hi, I'm Todd, and welcome to Acme Machining. Uh, going to do a little series, might be a series, might just be one video. We'll see how long it takes, how long it, how much video it actually takes up. So, I've, I've got an import rotary table, 8 inch rotary table. Uh, it's nothing special, nothing to say that it's a piece of junk either. It seems to work. I've been using it for a while, but I want to do some things to make it more useful because number one, you got to hold things on a rotary table. Well, the first thing is, it looks like a 5 8 T slot. It's not. It's a 14 millimeter. So I've made up some T slots, nuts. You've seen me do these before, so I'm not going to bore you with that again. Uh, but I've done some up. Uh, did them up for the half 13 thread pitch, but I've got a 6 inch 3 jaw and a 4 inch or a 8 inch 4 jaw for my lathe, and I'm going to mount, get that so I can mount these on this here. And also, I like to be able to go down through the center, and it's an MT3. And if you reach in, you can feel that at the end of the MT3, it, it's got a ridge because it's a taper, of course. And I measured the back of this here. And it's not a nice, clean, smooth bore. But if I make a plug at 0.964, I'm going to thread that for a uh, half inch, 13 thread pitch, so I can use all my hold down clamps that I've got. So if I want to mount something across my table, I can use the center hole or I can use any of my slots here. And I'm also going to get into uh, setting up the three jaw and four jaw. So I've got some hardware to do on that. Uh, the hardware I'm going to use to fasten that is going to be 5 sixteenths national coarse thread. And I've got some blank T nuts that I cut extra when I did the half inch 13s. So I'm going to just thread these for whatever I need. I just got to see that I want it to clear the lock stop. So I'm going to have to take some off the back. And I'm also going to see where my 8 inch four jaw mounts up here. So uh, I got to. If I stay clear of my lock, I'm in that far, but if I take a little bit off of the back there, uh, about 3 sixteenths by maybe quarter inch, I'll have, uh, and then I can put my hole wherever I need to on that, and that'll hold my four jaw chuck in there. So I want to make this more useful, so come on, we're going to have some fun. So we're over the lathe, and I've got a piece of 1 inch 1140 here, uh, it's 2 inches long. I'm just going to uh, turn it down to the 0.6, or 964. Uh, the measurement varies, so I just took the smallest measurement, and if I make a plug, it's not going to go up through the other end, so it's going to be great. And uh, I'm just going to do off about an inch of that because I've only got a two inch slug here so I'm going to clean it up and uh, we'll get uh, get down to size and drill a hole. So.
988. So I'm just going to take about 22 off and see where we finish up here. spring box. So I'm just going to dress that up with the file right now and uh, a little chamfer on the end here.
start with drilling a hole through the center here. And then we'll get it up to our half inch tap size. Some footage there because I went to shut the camera off and oh, it was already off. So we got our hole drilled and now we're just going to uh, turn our speed way down here 60 revolutions and we're just going to uh, get the tap to start here. Tapping much easier than it is uh, drilling. So. These set of sockets are made for taps. They've got an o-ring in there so they capture the taps and they're different size squares so I'm going to put this on and uh, have a controlled feel on it. Uh, rather feel my tap going in than jerking on it. want to break a tap off in this. Defeats the purpose.
talking too much. Uh, I've come down with COVID oops, three weeks ago. And I was on IV for that for five days. And then they say, yeah, you're okay now. And yeah, I got a lung infection. So now I'm on more meds. And Trying to get back out in the shop and do something. My wife's getting sick and tired of me in the house. So. Definitely not a fan of this 1140 material. Making a real nice thread in there. I guess it just wants me to work for it. Nothing comes easy, right? Just gonna say it's going pretty good and then the ratchet slipped. Almost need to change underwear when that happens. Figured it was a tap. I'll bring you back when I'm done here. There, so I got tap through there. Gonna clean up the edge. And puff there and make sure that it make sure that leading edge is clear after I debird the edge. So I'm going to turn that around and part it off here. Actually what I should do is I should just, I'm actually just going to face that down, chamfer it off and cut it down because I should have enough room for that two inch slug and then it won't be that far down in the bore of my rotary table. So.
two inches up in the bore of that rotary table, so I'll find out quick enough. Get rid of this piece of 1140, I don't like it. I'll use it up and I'll be more careful when I'm picking up free metal, or almost free, I guess. Seven, seven. So 13 to come off there. I should get it real close. Six three five. Well, that's close enough for this guy. Give it a quick polish here on the file. Okay, I'm going to pull that out of here and head over to the rotary table. Okay, so we got our slug. Fits our half inch thud kit. Slides in there nicely. We want to use our clamp set and just grab something by the center so you can machine around the outside, whatever you're doing. You know how it is, you never got things set up proper until they are set up proper. So, just another way I can use this. So, now I'm going to mount this up on the mill, get it centered in. And there's the first part of this endeavor. Okay, so I'm going to pull these uh, cam locks out of here. Because uh, I'd love to keep them in there and have a cam lock base. I've seen a guy on Inheritance Machining do a beautiful job on one. But. Uh, He's got some skills and some equipment that I don't have to uh, do that job. 
Uh, but, but check him out. He's done, uh, he had inherited his father's or his grandfather's machine shop. And uh, he's doing it proud. He really is. But uh, check it out. He does a real nice mount that he can put on his uh, milling machine or rotary table. And uh, it's as quick as changing chucks on your, your lathe. Uh, but it takes a big block of metal to do it. Takes money to buy that stuff, and takes tooling and accuracy to do that job. And he did a perfect job of it, folks. Um, and the only thing I don't like is it's going to add that much height to my. Now, one thing I've looked at here is I'm going to mount this with these five sixteenths hex ends, and. I'm going to set them up like this. Now, I don't have enough material in this to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount them in through this deck, the top deck. And what I've done is I've measured the depth here. And I've got about 2.275. And I'm approximately, I'm just 5 thou under 3 inch right there. So it leaves me about 718 thou of, like this top deck is about that thick up here. And all I've got to do is bury the head. Now, these here only torque up to about 18 foot pounds. I haven't looked it up on the chart. I know an 8 millimeter is 18 foot pounds, so 15 sixteenths is going to be real close. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to put it in the center because that does give more room for fractured castings. And I've got to stay clear of my uh, chuck adjusters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount them just off the side of this. And That should put me, I'm going to put them right about there. Okay? Because if I go right about there, I got this line to measure to. Uh, got about 5 eighths of an inch. And 5 eighths of an inch is going to put me center line nice and clear in there. So I'm not going to be trying to drill through all of this. I'm going to be coming just inside of it. Plus, when I get over to the uh, rotary table, I showed you how the... Actually, I'm going to pick you up and carry you over here right now. Now, I've got these. I haven't drilled them because I didn't know if I was going to... I was going to go 8 millimeter because I got an 8 millimeter clamp set. Uh, the only issue was trying to get an 8 millimeter hex key bolt without having to buy a hundred of them. So I went to Lowe's, they had 5 sixteenths, the size I wanted. I wish I could have got stainless, but beggars can't be choosers. I could buy any size I want, any material I want, if I want to buy a hundred. Now, one thing I did say that I wanted to watch is I don't want this hitting my lock. So I want to be inside of my lock ring. And if I go inside my lock ring, I'm just going to grab a measuring tape here real quick. It kind of lines me up with this index mark. And if I go index to index mark, I'm about six and three eighths. I'm just running back over to my truck. And if I go Index mark, index mark, um, six and a half. So I can go uh, the six and three eighths, which is going to allow me to put this bolt, this hex bolt, right into that uh, T nut. Uh, I'm just going to do that off camera. You guys seen me build T nuts before? If not, go back and take a look at my T nut video, and uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Now. I'm just going to make sure that we're in frame here, and we are. 
Now, trying to get a dull indicator. Slide that in neutral. Oh yeah, you guys want a free tools? Go on wish.com and buy Michitoyu fake tools. You'll know they're fake because they only want $29 for a $129 or $200 tool. And then you get the tool, and I'm going to see if I can zoom in here. Got to come in a little closer for you. Do you notice how they spell Michu Toya? Okay, they misspelled that. They also said it had a non-magnetic tip. And that is a magnetic tip. It is not a carbide tip. It's a magnetic piece of steel. But, we should have a pretty good idea. I'm going to see if I can get this into focus again. We should have a pretty idea that we're not getting a $200 tool for $29. But, you want to get it free? You order it, you pay your $29, and when you get it, you call them up and you say, what the heck are you doing? You're pawning off fake stuff. It's counterfeit. Oh, we're sorry. Would you like a refund? Yes, I would. Would you like your tool back? Don't bother. So, give it a try. I got two pieces from them. So, there, I've got a uh, tenth indicator in actual Michitoyu, tenth indicator. Uh, but if you ever use a tenth indicator to try to set something up, it can be a pain in the butt until you get real close. Now, one thing, I've got this in neutral. You're always trying to find the center. And we've used a wiggler. You've probably seen it before. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it a little bit backwards and a little bit to the side. Excuse my arm. And what I do is I take my T-slot cleaner and I just get it so it touches one side. And then I bring it in so it's touching this face and it's touching that face. Excuse my arm. Now, you see how far out I am? All I do is I push it halfway and halfway. And I turn it back on and I rinse and repeat. Now I can't, it's not like a wiggler, I can't just force it over there. So I just let it kind of find its spot. And again, close that gap up halfway in each direction. I'm getting real close there. So at that point, I can uh, chuck it in neutral and uh, get it in a lot closer. You can do it in neutral too if you want. I'm at zero in the back. And minus two here, so let's cut it in half. And we'll call that a minus one.
try to zero that again. No fun walking around the camera or the machine, but it's going to be done. And I'm at zero the back. And then a couple tenths there. Zero. Lock the table down. There's three zeros. There's four zeros. Now when I lock my knee, I got a foul. I need the knee unlocked, so I'm gonna leave it unlocked. Just putting the hairs there now, but trying to set up something to do precision work in the future so if I don't get it right now it ain't never gonna be right so. love to have a coaxial indicator Negative a thou there. Okay. Zero X, zero Y. Tell yourself you're going to be happy. If you can't make yourself proud, give up. Because you're not going to make anybody else proud. Okay, I'm just going to lower this knee down. So I'll leave that indicator in there. Because there's our goal for today, if it was only that easy. I don't need to indicate this yet, okay? It's 8 inches on 8 inches and like the, the, the fingeronomikers, you know, whatever you want to call them, 
They say a machinist can feel half a thou, so uh, I'm not saying I'm within half a thou right now. But all I've got to do right now is I've got to drill these holes. So I'm going to drill a hole right about there. And uh, I'll get this here bolted down to the table. That's why we did this in the first step. I'm working left handed here, trying to stay out of your guys' camera view of my other arm. Excuse me for coughing. Do whatever you can to not catch COVID. It gave me a, almost a month long vacation that I could not afford. Set my zero scale up there on my doll wheel, and uh, I'm gonna throw a drill truck in there and get set up to drill my 5 16 holes, and uh, I'll bring you back. I've got the DRO uh, zeroed in, so I'll bring you back when I got the drilling ready. So here goes nothing. Now, I don't like where that is, so I'm going to pick another number. <coughs> Actually, I'm going to roll these. right out because they do not need to be there. Now, where I'm drilling here, I'm not going to move the camera, but pick a spot right about here, and you can see the meat that's in here, okay? So, I'm drilling off just about right here. I'm in a nice strong part, 
I've got 700 thou. I'm only going down uh, about 310, 315 to bury the head on this. So all I'm looking at is it's going to be right about there. Come in just a little bit. I'm not going to be cutting into any delicate areas here. I should be, uh, yeah, I can reach my finger up underneath there and I am into a never never land. I'm actually going to move it just a little bit because that puts me on One hundred and ninety. Each turn is four degrees. Okay, still learning this. Learn every day, right? That leaves me on 190, and I can walk this down, excuse my reach. And you know what? Here goes nothing. Nice thing about cast iron, it likes to be machined. See what I mean about you run out of room. I'm gonna throw a rotary table and a chuck up here. Wonderful to have a cam lock sitting on the rotary table, like the young fellow in inheritance machining has, but it's you start taking inches out of your machine and you, you run out of room in a hurry. There's lots of mission, lots of material there. Excuse the noise, I'm going to vacuum this up. Cast iron machine's nice, but it makes a mess.
get out here more often. I can't find my crop. There they are, staring me right in the face. forgiving because it's cast iron, but This counterbore is supposed to be for a six millimeter, but I think it's going to be real close on these. Okay, I'm going to uh, bring this up to. Uh, I've got a. It's a counterbore bit for these hex heads. This is actually for a six millimeter one, uh, but I think it's gonna be real close. The, I've got one for an eight millimeter, but it's a lot bigger, and I wanna keep this as close as I can to size. So I'm gonna try this first. to go just, just size larger than that.
I need about four seven day Do not have a 12 millimeter. millimeter one is going to take me well over half inch so I'm going to just throw a half inch end mill in there taking any heavy amount of cuts. So yes, I am going to do this. I may regret it someday, but sneak this by here. Well, the end mill's got to come out anyway. <coughs> and of course, I'm hitting the bottom there, but that there is going to work out nice. You can see that it's going to be below the surface. So, I'm below the surface of anything here. So, good depth. Calling that good. So, I'm at 190. One ninety and ninety is two eighty. It's just rinse and repeat from here, so I'll bring you back when I got them done. Now, when I was measuring this up, I said that I had about 700 thousandths. So what I'm going to do here, just to see, is there's my zero. See where 
my drill bit breaks through. Going past 400. 500. 600. 501. So, just a quick rough guess with the uh, calipers gets you right where you want to be. So, I just got to finish up that last hole and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've got this loosened off right now and I've just centered it in my fingertips again. Okay, feels good. It's usually going to look good. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm dropping this down and I don't know if you can see it yep you can see in there the glare doesn't help sometimes but pretty much centered in my hole there it's where I want to be so I'm going to pick this up now I did notice one thing I think I'm striking bottom of the hole so I'll actually take a piece of paper and check that after. But what I'm going to do is I just want to set this so it's inside flush of the uh, the lock bar. I'll tighten this back up and I'm just going to go in with my 5 16 drill and I'm just going to touch the top of these uh, we'll just continue right along here and do it I'll show you one Just wanted to make sure I was hitting the bottom. Sorry for my head. <coughs> That's moving freely there. And I'm just inside of that, so it's gonna go down. That's all I wanted to do is give myself a mark on that just so I have an idea where I'm going to be drilling. Okay? That way I don't need to sit there and get all into the map and stuff like that. So I'm actually going to center that up just a little bit on the uh, when I do drill them. But like I said, all that is I'm just making a T nut there. You've seen me make tea nuts. If not, I've got a tea nut video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, likes and subscribes go a whole long ways into supporting this channel. Uh, I'm trying to get up over a thousand uh, subscribers uh, so that I can start getting something out of this and then being able to start putting more time into it. Uh, I've also, uh, I'm going to pick on people's generosity here and I'm going to throw a PayPal donation link if anybody's feeling generous I really appreciate it 
uh, everything I'm getting out of this is going back into uh, the machining so I can do more videos and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it and uh, we all keep growing and learning together so uh, I'm going to uh, finish up these four and I'll bring you back when this is ready to go. Thank you. Okay, so we got the four of these tea nuts made up. I did take 70 fowl off each one of these hex bolts because I was worried 